perspectives. How you think powers your mental views, your actions, and your ultimate reality. Join me, Emmanuel Utomi, every Sunday from 8.30 to 9 p.m. on PRZ 109.2 FM London as we explore how to live your best life possible. Perspectives. How you think. Good evening to you, dear listeners. And before you ask, let me put my hands up and own up. It is not deja vu. You actually were listening to the very first opening jingle that we used on Perspectives. And you know what? Just... I, I, I don't know how to say this, but for some reason, technology has decided to kick in. But, you know, technology has its aided by human beings. Um, you are welcome to Perspectives, the show that is designed to take you one step closer to a better life. And this is the Prayer Rallies on PRZ 109.2 FM. You are powerfully welcome. This is the week and the day that the Lord has made, and we will indeed rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome. Thank you for spending your time with me once more. And today I have some very, very old friends. They escaped, but you know, um, we sent the chariot of fire to go grab them back. <laughs> and they are laughing. I don't know why. You know what? Before I go into what we're going to say today, I want them to introduce themselves. So, uh, uh, should we start from the most quiet one or from the most vocal one? Where, who, where should we go first? I think I'm going to start from um, the, the most vocal one first. So, uh, uh, man of God, would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners, please? You know it's you I'm talking to. Uh? Sorry. I'll, I'll give you... <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, listening listeners. You can see I've been away for a while and I've actually forgotten what to say, but good evening, everyone. Not just it's, for oh, a while. It's, You've been it's, away for, for, for some time. What's happened is <laughs> Emmanuel has revoked our visa. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe everything you He's hear. revoked our visa and so we were not permitted to come, but you know how things are, how everything's working out for our good. All of a sudden, he needs us. And as we are, the good people that we are, we are here. <laughs> so how, where did you get the visa to attend today's broadcast? <laughs> uh, so, once again, it's always a pleasure to be here. Good evening, everyone. All right. So, he has spoken. So, um, our God, do you want to... You want to introduce yourself and say a few words to our listeners. And um, by the way, this is the... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Peter, right? I should say. This is the very person that... He will always start out very sober, <laughs> very calm. <laughs> Peter, do you want to conclude that for me, please? <laughs> no, no, I'm really serious. No, no. I, I, no we, we... You will... People will... Okay. Keep on listening. You will know what we're talking about. <laughs> so I, sh I should just leave it there. Just let it flow. Let okay, it flow. So do you want to introduce yourself and say hello to our listeners? Hello. It's good to be back. Um, my name is Moira Wolabi. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's like... Um, how do we... How do, how do we define... That's the prelude. That's the prelude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... I, 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 I want to say a very, very big thank you once again for joining us and spending your evening with us. It, it, it indeed promises to be a very, very exciting evening. So please get your loved ones. I mean, um, for the past broadcast and for if you'd like to listen to this same broadcast over and over again, just log on to the PRZ um, 109.2 FM africa account on soundcloud and you'd be able to um download yes you can download and listen to it over and over again um if you'd like to be a part of this program you can get in touch with us on 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 zero seven five seven two six zero five four three five you can send a text or call or you could send an email to perspectives at przfm.com or send a tweet 
at Perspective. If you have any questions, any comments that you'd like to share with us or that you'd like for us to broadcast on air, here's the opportunity to, to do that. And I guarantee you that you will be glad that you did. Um, Perspectives is indeed designed to encourage you to question how you think. It's also there to get you to develop the habit of, of thinking differently as well as to get you to develop a progressive and a solution-based mindset. Today, I want us to look at or we'll be discussing the question, who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? I, 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 I've, I've put this question out and I did get some very interesting feedback, particularly on social media. But before I go into the responses I got on social media, I want to engage the, the powerful men that I have in the audience to, to uh, what's it? So, 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 say it. Go on. It's good to start from the, it's good to start from the West. Coast. From, from where? From, from what you got from the social okay, media. Okay, from social media. So here, here I put out the question, how can you identify a true Christian? And I, I really got some really interesting comments. And I'm going to be reading some of them out. One said, um, those who believe in Christ. <laughs> okay. Um, I have another one that says, um, by their fruits... You shall know them. And I did have some interesting questions that I asked, but we're going to be going into that later. I think one of the most interesting responses I got to that question of who is a Christian is that by walking in love, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another, that that's one other way. But perhaps as far as I'm concerned, the most interesting one that I got is that a true Christian is born again not carnal but spiritual led by the holy spirit knows the word of god and acts in faith he serves god loves others prays for others is heaven focused praying patiently waiting for jesus christ's second coming jesus is lord i mean this is what why are you smiling why are you smiling you can't make heaven without that question. <laughs> <laughs> so so but because for me the Okay, let me, because I, I actually now engage this gentleman in a conversation. So I now sent this question to him. I said, okay, so how can you explain? Okay, no. The first question I asked, I said, I said, nice one. But how can I know all this in relating with the person? So how am I going to know all this by relating with the person? Then this was the response I got. He said, you don't plant a tree and start to harvest the fruit immediately. It is a relationship which grows with patience, led by the Holy Spirit. You will quickly understand if you are equally a Christian with the same faith. Good luck in Jesus' name. So I now asked him a question in return to that. He said, how can you explain this answer to someone who does not know the scriptures? Yeah, Peter, I see you shaking, shaking your head. So uh, l let's hear from you. you. You are shaking your head for, for obviously a reason. Okay. The, the main reason why I'm shaking, it's, it's not a shaking. I am shaking my head. No, let me not say I'm not shaking my head. I am shaking my, my head simply because I slightly, actually, no, I, I'm, I might be a bit more than slightly disagree with that. Um, simply because one of the things, a very important thing is that, and a thing that we Christians are very, um, very used to, we have a, 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 a our own language, sure. which, which, okay. which we sure. have a, a way we say certain things that sort of automatically they, they, they exempt certain people. Um, um, and so when you're exempting people, people don't fully understand. And so if someone was, for example, to suddenly um, become a Christian, it would seem like from that statement, there's a certain step criteria that you'd have to follow. For mm -hmm. you. So I couldn't be a Christian today. I couldn't be a Christian today because I, I, it, it's impossible for me to fulfill all of those things in a slight, in a, in a, in a, in a brief knowledge or b brief becoming a Christian. 
So because there is because he stated a few things that relate to mm. being a Christian that yeah. you uh, you know if you were born again today, this we could still say well you're not a Christian because you don't fulfill certain criteria. Let me let's rewind the clock. Let let's let's reset. Let us assume that we don't have these responses. My wife, I was to ask you. What does it mean to be a Christian? Or how can you identify a true Christian? How would you answer that question? Well, <clears throat> firstly, you have to understand or try and define the word Christian. Okay. You have to understand the origin of that word. Hmm. You see, I believe in the book of Acts. Okay. In Antios, that's when yeah. the word Acts eleven twenty six twenty seven. Yeah. That's a, that's where the word Christian, Christian was used for the very first time. For, for, and the reason being, well, from studying the Bible is the fact that they saw the characteristic of Jesus in the apostles. Hmm. They were behaving like him, speak like him, do miracles like him, and that is when the word Christian was coined out. So, in order for us to understand who a Christian or what are the um, um, how, how do you identify how do you, a, that's true a true Christian? Christian there, as you said, there it's it's based on the fruits. It you see, if if I say I'm a Christian, that doesn't mean that I will not have issues that I'm dealing with. It does not necessarily mean that my character will be pure and, you know, but there are certain aspects of me that people will say and say, mm, there's something about him. I might not be able to understand it, but there's just something about him that, and the person, are you a Christian? You see, for me, it, it's about your fruit. It's about the things you do. It's about your lifestyle, per se. If you understand what I'm saying, it's, it's about your lifestyle. Okay. Let, Peter, let, let me bring you in here. So, to you, how would you address this question? How can you identify a true Christian? Um, okay. I suppose I, I look at it in two ways. One, in that there are a Christian will have okay you can identify them by their fruits there's a, a mm. behavior a lifestyle so, that yep. uh, that that goes along with mm -hmm. being a christian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but like i said earlier on I, I i well this is my own personal view yep. and and that is a view that a christian is someone who loves god yep. puts god first mm -hmm. in everything mm -hmm. views things through that knowledge yeah, that I they have god. of mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. and so and so and because of that you could be someone who's just known God for an hour okay. and be a I Christian. Okay. And, and, and so, and yet, and, and as you grow in knowing and be more as you become a Christian, you now start to exude certain behaviors, characteristics yep. that people will then be able to identify and say, well, if they have a, a, a view of what they perceive a Christian is, mm -hmm. they'll be able to say, oh, that is an example or a, or a trait of someone who they know as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So that's, in a sense, my difference in that mm -hmm. the fruits will come as you know him, as you start to continue in that lifestyle of being a Christian. But you may not necessarily see it from someone who's new mm -hmm. to, to becoming a Christian, but you, couldn't, you wouldn't be able to kind of sign them off and say, well, you haven't fulfilled those cri that cri that that's my only thing with certain criteria because sometimes in being a christian depending on where you have come from what you've been through you may not necessarily you know t show those fruits straight away okay. it's just like a, for me it's like a newborn baby okay. mm. if i'm born in africa i don't speak my dialect immediately I, it, yeah. it it takes a while yeah. Yeah. i'm taught how to speak my lingual. It might take, probably when I'm age three, age two, I'm taught how to speak. Mm -hmm. So, being a Christian will take time for the food to, to be mm -hmm. seen. That's right. For you to exhibit who you are in Christ. 
You see, the first few months, the food might not be there, but after a while, you begin to, because the more you study the world, the more you associate yourself with those who have what you have, you begin, unconsciously, you begin to display the life of being a Christian, like any other tribe, like like any other society. You just take on the character of that society and you begin to behave like one. Uh, I, you know, one of the things I've, I've, I, I think I've taken from what both of you have said so far has been the fact that as a Christian, one of the ways that you could actually be identified is by the fruits. Mm. We will come back to that. Mm. But you've also stated clearly that the fruits in themselves are not necessarily present when one becomes a, a Christian. So what that tells me is that is that there is an I, I, I wouldn't call it an entry requirement or that there's an entry point. Mm -hmm. So there's a point at which I do something that makes me a Christian, mm. but after that, there are certain things I'm supposed to do. There's a way I'm supposed to conduct myself in order to, um, how do I put it, emphasize the fact that I'm actually now a Christian. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. But so my question now is, mm -hmm. let's go back to that starting point. Mm -hmm. How and where is that transition made from being an ordinary person to, to becoming be. a Christian? What, what What's the process for that transition? For me, if I may answer that, okay. I will look at the life of Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter dined with Jesus, walked with Jesus, but at the point in his life, he wasn't behave like, behaving like a Christian. He was doing some things... Oh, he wasn't behaving like Christ. Like Christ, yeah. Okay. He wasn't behaving like Christ. Should we now say that he wasn't a Christian when he was not behaving like Christ? Am I making sense? Because there was a time, there was a period in his life, Jesus called him Satan, get thee behind me. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't exhibiting the life of Christ in him. And you see, for me, I believe Christian journey takes time. It's a work in progress. Mm. You see, up till you die, there are things that you will you will keep saying that Lord help me. Mm. So, are we going to say? Can we confidently say that boldly that I am more Christian than any other person? But w w my question, the entry point. To the entry point. The en I think w what you've talked about mm -hmm. has to do with, okay, after becoming a Christian, mm -hmm. after g giving I, your life to yeah, Jesus, that's it. this is what is expected of you mm -hmm. in order to be referred to or to be accepted as a Christian. Mm -hmm. So my question goes, takes us back to the start that, okay, how does a person become a Christian? It's by giving his life to Christ. It's by accepting. It's like, it's like saying, mm. how do you become a British citizen? Okay. What, what, what is it that makes you a British citizen? Okay. If you are in other countries and there was war in a country, there are requirements as a British citizen in order for them to take you out of that country. One, you must carry your passport. Okay. You must have the British passport. Mm -hmm. so, so is the kingdom. The first entry point is giving yourself to Christ, to being a citizen of that kingdom. Mm -hmm. so that you can boldly say that I have submitted my life to the owner of that kingdom. That is the entry point. There is no debating it. There is no there is no there is no argument about it. That is it's that entry point is every other thing is built on it. Your character, the journey of your life, it's built on that entry point. As a British citizen, every benefit you will get is based on you having that citizenship. Okay, so good. Let me bring Peter in before we I, I'm gonna go back or come back to that um analogy. So, Peter, as far as you're concerned, how does a person initially become a Christian? Well, 
I suppose, sort of in line with what um, we was, has said, you have to have accepted, acknowledged, without a shadow of a doubt, that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Okay. So you have to have there's, the, uh, you know, like what Muwa said you 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 know very well so if all of a sudden something happened a cloud of smoke hit the ground and they said all the christians jump up you jump up automatically because you know that you know that you know mm -hmm. it's no it's not there's no confusion in it yeah. and that's that's the time that you can that you will you have i can an say assurance. A, an assurance that yes you've made a conscious effort that a conscious effort that that you know Mm. And so it's it's we are all from a, a, a Nigerian origin. So if someone was to say, "Are you Nigerians?" there would be no no, no second thought. no second thought. You wouldn't yep. think twice about responding to that question. The same would apply to you to say, "I am a Christian. I am a, a, I've accepted Christ because I know that I know." There's no confusion in the matter. Um, listeners, this is perspectives on the prayer rally zone. PRZ one hundred nine point two FM, and this is the show perspective designed to take you one step closer to a better life and with me today is Muiwa Olabi and Peter Akimejiwa and my name is Emmanuel Utomi and we're looking at the question who is a Christian now the reason I decided to bring us back to the basics is so that we separate the issues one issue is at what point do I become a Christian mm -hmm. which is separate from the quality of life as a Christian. Hmm. So, thank you, sir. I can give my life to Jesus. That is entirely different from yep. how I now live that Christian life. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so I, I still want to uh, take us back to giving my life to Jesus, which is what I described as the entry point. Now, we were earlier, you looked at, you, you used the analogy of becoming a British citizen. I guess for for British citizenship, it's either you are born Natural British, education. which means either of your parents, parents. or both parents mm -hmm. are British nationals, mm -hmm. and or, if they give birth to you mm -hmm. anywhere in the world, automatically. I'm assuming, mm -hmm. particularly if you were born within the shores of mm -hmm. the UK, you take on British citizenship. Yeah. That's one route. Mm -hmm. The other would be to naturalize as a citizen mm -hmm. so you have the citizenship of another country but now you fulfill the criteria that are laid down by the british government for those deciding or willing to take up british citizenship so once you fulfill those criteria you are now bestowed british citizenship mm -hmm. Yep. I, I think I'm right yep. so far. Yep. Okay. Yep. If we use that analogy with Christianity, at some point Nicodemus in John chapter 3 comes to Jesus and says, look, um, Jesus says to him, you have to be born again. Mm. Nicodemus said, I don't understand. Jesus says, you have to be, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So he says, for you to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. Mm -hmm. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming that's what we're talking about here, yep. which we relate also to Romans where it says, for with the heart, man, man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession mm -hmm. is made unto salvation. Yep. So like you said, at some point in time, the criteria for becoming a Christian starts from you believing with your heart mm -hmm. or in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord mm -hmm. and that he died for you and then confessing it with your mouth that's right now why have i decided to clarify this point or to lay it bare sometimes it is possible for people to have and to live by high moral standards mm. and for that reason compare themselves to those who quote and unquote bear the fruit of christianity mm. And to look at you as a Christian and says, well, there's no difference between you and I. Because I'm pious. I, I, I love my neighbor as myself. I do everything your Bible says. But at no point have I believed, in fact, I don't accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. So, 
would it be fair to say that you might bear all the fruits and not a Christian? And yet, if at no point in time, either privately or publicly, mm -hmm. if at no point in time in the past have you admitted mm -hmm. to God that Jesus is your Lord and Savior and that he died for you, would it be fair to say that person is actually not a Christian yet? Yes, sir. Very fair. Very fair. With, 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 with any iota of doubt. Let me, in that, you see, again, I'll come back to United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. There are people who are living in United Kingdom illegally. Okay. But people okay. was people back home will say they are they live they, in the UK. They, they live that is it in the UK, but they are not they are not the citizen of United Kingdom. So they are enjoying the benefits of living within the, the boundaries, the, but they are not citizen of United Kingdom. Okay. That is it. You see, the fact of the matter that you do the Christian gymnastics as we will say it. It's not, it's not enough for you to enter the kingdom of that person that owns the kingdom if you have not accepted that person in your heart. You can speak all the lingual as you want, but you are not a citizen. It's as simple as that. They can tell you that you are. People from far and where can tell you, oh, you behave like a Christian, but you know you are not. Peter, what do you say? No, I... I, I totally I, I don't think i could have put it better to be honest i think um it's it's such uh, an important factor because you would be so there are a lot of people out there who fulfill the criteria of being good people mm. Mm. that's not what we're going for we're not <laughs> going to fit that criteria of a nice person um we're not meeting the criteria of of um, giving to the poor that's not the criteria we're going for and a lot of people have misconstrued or misread that being good is enough and, and and that's one of the reasons why a lot of people have wondered why do i need to be a christian because I, i'm doing what yeah. i'm doing what yes, everyone else yes, or, or what people subscribe christians do but if you look at it from the point of view of for example, a drug dealer could give to charity. True. Mm -hmm. They're material, they're giving to the poor. Why not them? Mm. So there is a specific, a specific, it is so specific that there is no doubt to anyone. Don't be confused. We're not going to suggest in any way, shape or form that if you do all these amazing things, that's enough. Without you accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, mm. the rest is is just work it's just stuff you do and like i said a lot of people do that stuff mm. a lot of people do that stuff but it's not enough so the 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 point therefore is this that we're not saying i guess that it goes back to the purpose of perspectives as a program where we're saying it, it encourages you to question how you think, think. Mm. that it also gets you to the point where you develop the habit of thinking differently. I have seen, you know, it is not our goal to say to you if you're a Christian or not. Mm. It's That's our right. goal to get you to think about what we're saying in line with what the Bible says you ought to do. Mm if you will become a christian again i'm going to go back to the uh, analogy that Muiwa gave about Brit becoming british that you can either be born british or you can at some point fulfill the criteria laid down in the constitution of the land things that you ought to do in order to be recognized as a british citizen before you get it in the same way there are certain things that the constitution of the kingdom Thank you, of God Thank you, has sir. already laid down. Now, you can argue with it all you want. want. That's it. All right. You, you, you can disagree with it all you want. That's, that's, it. that's your constitutional right. 
But the point remains that if you are to be a Christian in line with what the word of God, the Bible says, then you need to go back into that Bible and do what it has said. Mm -hmm. And from what we've said, it says in Romans, it says, if you believe with your heart mm -hmm. and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you shall be saved. And this is what we mean by becoming a Christian. Now, let's take this conversation to the next level, which is where we actually started from, which is, okay, now I have given my life to Jesus, right? Now I have become a Christian. So now I have taken up this citizenship. Now, in order to be recognized as a citizen, no, not, I take back that word. Now that I have become a citizen of heaven, there are standards that are laid down that I ought to live by. So, what are some of those standards? You see, sorry for coming in. As you were, as you were speaking, you see, what, what came to mind was dual, dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. Some of us profess to be a Christian. But we're living the life of the other the citizenship, citizenship of that we had. We, that is it. Or that we have. That so we, so no, what you're no. saying is that some of us still have dual, dual citizenship. citizenship. That's why I was laughing when you're we messing, are messing me up, sir. Where we are very selective <laughs> about how we act. Yeah. You know, someone once said something that I found very profound. It's actually a pastor and it, it blessed me. He said within the confines of the four worlds of the church is not where you need to be a Christian. No. It's outside. That you're actually required to be a Christian outside yep. the church. I totally agree that with it. Most of us, it's only when we come in within the confines of those worlds, when there are other quote-unquote like-minded Christians like us, that we exhibit the traits of a Christian. But come Monday morning, car park. <laughs> oh, at the car park on Sunday. Stop Monday morning. It's car park. You're stretching it. It's car park. <laughs> then you begin to see the dual citizenship in people in action. In action. <laughs> Peter, why you I can, I can, I can even go. Oh no, no, no! no I won't go that. Oh, no, no, go, no, 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 go, okay. go, go, go. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I could actually you know what let me guess okay so let's not get to the car park let's <laughs> shut it let's shut it down sooner than the car park uh, after the grace oh <laughs> after the grace <laughs> after the message you see the manifestation of the sons of God <laughs> I don't want to say during the message. I really don't. But I think I will have to. Because you'd be surprised how we, and I say we, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. we, I'm not, I'm not exempting, yeah. we have the abilities to flag our dual citizenship <laughs> when we need to. I, I think I, I think that that would be a beautiful <laughs> title for a, a Sunday message. Dual citizenship. citizenship. <laughs> Someone's got to preach it. <laughs> Someone's got to preach it. Someone's got to preach it. How how do we? Okay, let me rephrase that question. What are okay? Me, see, sorry, go I'm yeah, enjoying no, no, this. It's, it's, it's like some of us we have United Kingdom passport. But when it comes to football, cricket, you will see how we switch to our original or okay. to, to our lineage per se. And we will abandon, we will suddenly forget that we're British mm. and we are rooting for Nigeria as it were. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the benefits, mm. We fo suddenly forget that we are Nigerian and we remember that is where we will now bring out the British citizens. The same with Christians. Mm. When they need prayers, when we need our prayers to be answered, 
then we'll do all our gymnastics then we will know how to pray but when things are better for us we forget we're Christians and we take up we take up this no, no, dual citizenship we remember the old passport the old life hmm. that we used to not if that is in us that we use from time to time actually you know the funny thing is the more the more you think about these things the more it it it's it, it makes more sense and it it just sheds light on how we actually conduct ourselves mm. in that in that let's you know let's look at the scenario of the of the two the two um passports mm. we keep two pa we walk around with the two passports yes. we walk around with it because yeah. we know at any point in time i am prepared to use it. Yeah. and we've got to a place whereby it, it flows so naturally mm. it flows so naturally um that we we will use it at any point any any slightest any, yes in, opportunity in, sir. in science we say at any time t, t. Mm. any time and we are so used to conducting our lives in that manner whereby mm. whatever suits us um, still under the under the umbrella of of being a Christian, Christian, and this is this is not to to try and say that oh it's you know it's the everyday Christian that does this. We all struggle. Mm -hmm. We all struggle with this. Mm -hmm. We all struggle with this. But it's it's to become a, a lifestyle of of trusting in God, trusting in His ways, viewing things through His eyes consistently that brings us away from that otherwise we you're as they, what do they say well we are uh, we are um always just a few steps from our next sin yep um be it in mind be it in action we're always just a few steps mm. away so it's not that we're condemning anyone to say yes we switch mm. uh, at any time t but you have to make a conscious effort you have to 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 continue and and that's where we, we you know we we're talking about the fruits we were talking about the yeah. fruits earlier on the fruits start to manifest the more you stay in the word the Thank more you, you hunger for god Thank the you, more sir. you know him Thank the fruits you, start because one one of the things we mm. try and do is we try and 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 find an answer for the problem mm -hmm. so so i have 10 for example i have 10 problems 10 issues that i'm struggling with and so I'm, I'm looking for 10 problems. I'm looking for 10 solutions to the problem. Mm. But the answer is actually knowing God. Mm. Because once you, the more you know God, those problems start to drop off. They become less and less issues. That's you, it, you, you forget that you have dual um, 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 nationality because you're so far removed from, you don't even remember where you put the passport that mm. you flag up every so often. And so that's how, how, for me, it's about appreciating God. You see, let, let, me, let me tell you one of the things that, for me, you see, I keep saying to myself that, that you know, sometimes I, I say it often that, thank God for Britain. Do you know why? Because there are benefits that you are enjoying that you might not necessarily enjoy back from my own country. Mm -hmm. And that will help you to begin to appreciate the country. Mm. That will appreciate, help you to begin to do things not to hurt the country. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It begins to help you to speak about the country in a positive light. It begins to help you to obey the laws of the country. Because you are beginning to see the benefit of the country same is god once you begin to appreciate what jesus did for you the benefit of being a christian you see you begin to forget about your other passport you begin to be removed from using that other passport as often as possible probably you use it 10 times a day it it will reduce to about two times a day yeah probably twice in a month mm. You might not completely get rid of it, mm. but the usage of the usage of it will reduce drastically. I, I think one of the things I'm I'm going to add, and again I'm going to take us back to the entry point of 
what it means, what it takes to become a Christian initially. And we talked about um, believing in our, with our hearts mm. and then confessing with our mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord. That the idea really is that at the point at which we become born again, which is the phrase that we commonly use, mm -hmm. at the point at which we give our lives to Jesus, what ideally ought to happen which is then reflected after that point or from that point on is that we leave our old nature behind and we take on the nature of God. Mm -hmm. In John chapter 3 verse 6, this is the Amplified Translation. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, he says, what is born of or from the flesh is flesh. That is, it's of that which is physical. Mm -hmm takes on physical nature mm. and what is born of the spirit and he uses the capital s which in this case refers to the spirit of god mm. takes on and exhibits the nature and the spirit of god and this is a response that jesus gave in answer to the first question that nicodemus asked earlier in the mm -hmm. verse which is mm. look no man can do these things that you do except god be with him mm. Mm. And Jesus said to him, look, it's, it's not what I do. Mm. It is actually what you're seeing is a product of the nature that I have. Mm. That's right. Mm. I think in the same vein, when you take on British nationality or British citizenship, as the word says, it's not so much just taking up a passport. Mm. It's having the mindset. mindset. That's a word conducting yourself the That's way right. the number yes. one citizen of this nation will yes, will sir. conduct themselves. Yes, sir. Abiding by the constitution, mm -hmm. abiding by the rules, mm -hmm. to the point where even when you don't have access to the constitution at the physical level, it has become I second agree. nature yes. Yes, sir. that in any given situation, you find yourself to be naturally... Mm -hmm acting out the constitution itself mm -hmm. now that happens when you no longer have any other citizenship or allegiance to someone that, something else mm. so mm. Mm. i think that perhaps and i think we've had this conversation sometime in the past that perhaps we need to visit the very foundation yes, of sir. what we're saying to people yes, when we say to them give your life to jesus yes, because sir. if i'm saying to you all right i need you to give your life to jesus because he will bless you because you will own a car he will buy you a house you will no longer fall sick you will have everything so it means if that's my motive for becoming a christian it means i'm going to pursue that motive come what may hmm. however if you're saying to me I need you to give your life to Jesus because without him, you're nobody. He died for you. It's time to reciprocate his love and to take that love and be a blessing to, the, to, the, to your environment. It's a different premise in itself. Perhaps there's a need for us to actually visit the entry point, sir. The entry point. That's it. Perhaps there's a need for us, even as Christians, to ask ourselves this very question am i indeed born of the spirit yes sir am i exhibiting the f and and i'm not talking about the miracles now i'm talking about lifestyle thank you do i have god's lifestyle and if i'm in any doubt there's the constitution there mm. paul talks about not being the epistle that is not written mm. with hands mm. Mm. That people can look at us, who we are, in a very in fact, sometimes even without saying a word. That's it. Regardless of where we are found, wh whether we find ourselves, whether we are found in the in the bar, in the pub, at home, at work, people look at the way we conduct ourselves, the things that we say, and say, You must be a Christian. So, my okay, yes. let me give you an example. And this happened on Tuesday, okay. There's this Muslim person. We're talking. 
and I told the prophet Ezekiel and all that. Mm. Do you believe he went to see him? A conk Muslim, praying Muslim. We were talking, we were just talking, and I was sharing life. I was sharing practical life. And he, he stood there for a while. And he said, you know what? And this is his statement. He said, if I am not careful, very soon I will give my life. To Jesus. To Jesus. Yeah. He said it with his mouth. And I, after that conversation, I sat and I said to myself, surely there is God. And he went to see a servant of the living God, a praying Muslim. So your lifestyle it's, it's, it's Bible in itself that will preach to people without carrying your Bible. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it, it's about the way you live your life. Not within the four walls of the church, but somewhere else. People will pick it that there's something different about. You've said to me many times that someone has come, well, came to your office and said, Emmanuel, are you a Christian? It's not because we, you preach to him, but your lifestyle. Are we perfect? Definitely I'm not. But there's something that people will see that say, hmm, there's something about you. That's what we're saying. Nobody's saying you will be perfect. I'm not saying that because I'm not. Definitely Peter wasn't. Definitely Paul wasn't. Mm. But there's something about their life that speaks about Christ, that speaks about the crucifixion of Christ, that people will see, and they'll say, Peter, there's something about you. That's what we're talking about. Let me ask an obvious question, because, um, again, I keep going back to the core reason why Perspectives as a, as a, as a program exists, and it is to challenge mindsets. Like I said, it's an obvious question. Is it possible to be a Christian and be financially poor? Yes. Okay. Is it possible to be a Christian and sometimes fall ill? Yes. Is it possible to be a Christian? And I mean a Christian in the real sense of the word. Yes. And have problems in life. Yes. So where do we get this notion from where that as a Christian, everything should be perfect. In fact, as a Christian, those things you've said will come to you. Because you carry a British passport does not exempt you from harshness of life. Actually, that is because you carry a British passport. You are a target. That is why you now become a target, target. for certain people yes. in the world. Same as a Christian. Um, I think in, in addition to that, what a lot of us seem to forget is that God has a way of showing himself in our lives. Mm -hmm. And one of the many ways he does that is when we go through those things that mm -hmm. seem to not be what we thought we should be going through. The things that break you. The mm. things that mm. destabilize you. Yes, sir. <laughs> and what a lot of us Christians have been taught, and what we've kind of assumed, is that being a Christian should automatically sign us off from those things happening to us. We shouldn't. You, we, they, they shouldn't. You, someone says, oh, this is going wrong in my life. Someone's, we need to kneel down and pray. We need to cast. We need to stop all these things from happening. Meanwhile, God is still at work. Mm. God is building your character. He's molding you into the person that you need to be, possibly for the battles ahead. You, possibly for the issues that your children may go through. Mm. So that they can look to you and say, Mom, Dad, this is the problem I have. And you can look back to them and say, Ah, I've been through this. Mm. I can help you. Mm. This is how I knew God. And the, the funniest thing is that when we don't, there's a, there's this sickness um, that basically is when you can't feel pain. Mm. 
I, I've forgotten the name. It's when you can't feel pain. And so you would have thought, yes, not feeling pain would be the great way to go. But what you don't realize is when you don't feel pain, you can never identify danger. Yeah. Yeah. You put your hand next to something hot because you can't feel pain. You don't know to take your hand away. It's doing damage to you. And so, and so, but we as believers have just come to that conclusion that wow. for some reason wow. we have to have a non, wow. a pain free zone. We live a pain-free existence. And so we will do so many things to, in a sense, avoid any form of pain. Mm. The only problem with that is, like I said before, you never really get to know God, the power of his might, what he does for you, what he does in the background for you, what he keeps you from, because you don't have any way of testing or knowing that God has done this. Yeah, yeah. See, the message of illusion is being preached in the church. Illusion as in, you, do, you won't go through any problem. If that be the case, why did Jesus have to die? He redeemed life by his word. So why didn't he do it the second time? If he hung on the cross, and he said it is finished, Peter went through problems, James did, Paul did, but this generation feels that once you give your life, Money, money trees at the back of your house. Let me let me throw in a quick balance, and this is the well. I, I'm gonna because our time is far spent. Okay, so where do I draw the line? Okay, as a Christian, should I now therefore become consistently poor all my life? No. As a Christian, should I now therefore become consistently in pain? No. In in suffering? No. Okay, let me let me no. <laughs> quickly interject. Um, the 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 game plan. Let me break it down and make it simple. The game plan is to know God. Okay. The game plan is to know Christ. The game plan, and that's the only game plan we have. We need to know Him because from knowing Him, we will recognize and realize that the trials of life will come and go, whatever yes. they are. You might be wealthy all the way through. That doesn't mean you won't have the trials of life. Yes, you might be poor. That doesn't mean you won't have the trials of life. Whatever those trials may be for each individual is very different. So don't, don't, don't let anyone give you the impression that you sign off from those things. It, no one is saying you will be consistently poor. No one is saying, but remember the thing we said at the very beginning. God, being a Christian... Is for anyone and everyone. Yeah, I mean, it includes. Let's let's just say the caveat is from the poor to the rich and everyone in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're never exempt. So the rich man doesn't say I don't know Christ because I have too much money. Or I don't have enough. The poor man doesn't say I don't know Christ because I don't have money. We are all in that sphere all the way through. Yeah. All of us having the same access. Yeah. Well, for me, the answer to that is prayer. When those challenges come to you take it to your father those are one of the tools given to us as christians that those jesus said that the troubles of this world will come but he said we that he has overcome it therefore you can the same way he overcome the pressures of life we can by praying by taking that matters to god listeners i i i i am um as one of my friends will say, I am flabberwhelmed and overgasted. <laughs> it, it's evident that somewhere along the line, we need to rethink who we define as a Christian. Somewhere along the line, we need to question ourselves as to our motives for becoming Christians. Somewhere along the line, we need to question why we became Christians and how we are living this life as Christians. But I, I know this for, for sure, that the Bible says that the thoughts that God has for us, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil, yes, to give us a future and a hope, mm. that it is practically impossible to give your life to God and he doesn't have anything good planned for you. Mm. In Romans mm. eight twenty eight, he says, and we know, that all things works together for good 
for them that love God and for them who are the called according to his purpose. So if indeed we love God, if indeed we have decided to give our lives to Jesus and to honor him with every single part of our being, then indeed God being God will definitely come out for us and support us. So as I close, I'd like to say this, that I pray that as you go into this new week, that you will do something, no matter how small, that will take you into that future that you're believing God for. And as you renew your relationship with God the Father, and if you don't have a relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this might be the opportunity that you've been asking for. I'd suggest that you take it and do something out of it. And until we meet again same time next week, I'd like to say thank you very much and God bless. Bye-bye. Imagination, relationships, personality, and your values are some of the things that have not just eaten deep into your nature, but they have become your very nature. When was the last time you questioned any of these things? When was the last time you questioned how you think? Join me, Emmanuel Utomi, and my guests every Monday from 9 p.m. on PRZ 109.2 FM London on Perspectives. Because how you think powers your worldviews, actions, and your ultimate reality. So, come on. Let us explore alternative ways of looking at life's issues. Perspectives. What you already know should not stand in the way of what you could learn.